Hello, this is the trade site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview and Domestic Economic Data Roadmap for the week beginning Monday, May 29th and ending Friday the 2nd. Except really it doesn't begin Monday because Monday is Memorial Day and stocks, banks, and futures and everything are closed. But we will look at the week ahead nevertheless. Here's a look at the ES Front Month Futures Contract. This is the daily chart of the S&P 500 in futures form. You can see the 13 sell signal. We dipped and then we moved up. We hit the risk line of that 13 sell signal exactly. We could not get through. If we fail here, this is usually interesting. Usually if you can get up to those risk lines and fail, that becomes interesting. Of course, to negate the risk line, we just have to close above it and take out the high of that day the next day. We used it basically as the high on Thursday and Friday was basically a wasted session as you'll see uh, as we go through the intraday action. But let's start with the daily charts of the major indices. Crude oil gained 85 cents on Friday after dipping Thursday, so it's back to 49.75, closing under 50. Gold up nine dollars and forty cents to 12.65. This thing hasn't moved, and this is exactly, by the way, this is exactly where it crossed on election day. S&P was literally up less than a point. Now the 13 signal here, remember the futures are always the more specific way. This is the cash index. The 13 signal here, we have broken the risk line. NDX, Nasdaq 100 up 10. Sox up four. Biotechs were down 23. Actually, this is flirting with three-month lows on the biotechs. The VIX down 18 cents to 981. Remember, we've only had just a two couple weeks back. We finally had a close under 10. This is absolutely horrific. I mean, the VIX being down here, even where it was through January, February, March was bad. But this now in, in May, we've seen these numbers in the in the single digits down in ninth. That just doesn't happen for the VIX. It means there's no volatility in the market, no action. Not a good sign for traders. Uh, we did get some action for a couple days, and we actually had a good week here, not including Friday, which was obviously dead. But, you know, you can't have the VIX down here most of the time and expect things to move. The trend at 1.23 on Friday puts the 10-day at 1.10, which is not a signal. NASDAQ volume, basically the whole week spent right around that 1.55 billion share mark, which is down uh, one of the lightest volume weeks in a while. Uh, there was a week like that in the middle of April with, with uh, I think, the Good Friday and everything. Uh, but generally speaking, this has been a very light week. Advanced decline ratio on the NASDAQ, negative 127. On the New York, uh, plus 190. So basically flat there. Google uh, up a buck 41. Why not? New closing high in Google. It's been carrying the market. Apple down 26 cents. Hasn't made a new high for two weeks. Amazon up $2.40. New closing high. Netflix down 62 cents, but still near the closing high. Tesla up 831, almost a breakout there. High range base formation on Tesla. The TLT, the 20 year bond was up 21 cents. This is, uh, you know, this has been very flat now for several months as well. The Dow Jones loses two points and the Goldman Sachs was up a buck. So now let's look at the intra-week action. This will be the more interesting stuff. And this, well, first of all, here's the five minutes. So this is just Thursday and Friday, look at that. From basically the end of the first hour on Thursday, all the way through the rest of Thursday and Friday, you're basically in a six-point range for a day and a half, more than a day and a half. And that is just, I mean, it's the holiday weekend that we knew Friday was going to be late, but that still is just absolutely crazy. So here's the whole week. Monday, you get a little gap up, tried to go higher, came back, drifted higher over lunch, then dead flat in the afternoon. Tuesday, slight gap up, filled it, drifted a little higher, right ahead of lunch, dead flat in the afternoon. Wednesday, continued that same dead flat range. Look at this. I mean, this is just amazing. You can you can account for any move in this week. There's two little gaps that never filled. So where do we go? Let's let's do this as traders so we understand. From 23.82 to 24.14. So so we gained 32 points on the ES. We gapped Monday morning uh, about four points, and we gapped Thursday morning about six points. So there's 10 of the 32, right? And then you moved another bit Thursday morning, you moved uh, another 10 points. So there's another 10. So there's 20 of the 32 points are in two gaps and the first hour on Thursday. And the rest of the 12 points for the week was the entire trading week. Most of it like from Tuesday until Wednesday's close, midday Tuesday until Wednesday's close, dead flat. From an hour in Thursday until Friday's close, dead flat. I mean, that is just as flat. You're not gonna find weeks like that typically. Here's the NASDAQ side, obviously flat on Friday, drift a little higher. Not much to say, folks. That's that's just bad. I mean, that is that is not a good environment, and that is a result of the VIX. I mean, the VIX is the telling signal, right? That tells you that the market's going to be like that, so that you don't overtrade and lose money trying to force things to happen. 
All right, let's take a look at the data. So Monday, we're closed for Memorial Day. Tuesday, personal income and spending. We got the uh, S&P Case-Shiller Housing Price Index at 9, Consumer Confidence at 10. These are Eastern Time. Dow's Fed Manufacturer Serving at 1030. Uh, Wednesday, we've got MBA mortgage applications an hour before the bell. We got the Red Book. We got Chicago PMI at 9:45. That's 15 minutes in. Pending home sales 30 minutes in. Base Book at two in the afternoon. Thursday, we've got Challenger job cut report at 7:30. ADP employment report at 8:15. Jobless claims. That's the weekly number at 8:30. Productivity and costs at 8:30. Uh, PMI manufacturing index at 9:45. We got the ISM manufacturing index at 10. Construction spending at 10. The weekly natty gas number at 10. The petroleum, that's the weekly uh, oil inventories at 11. That's a day later than normal because of the holiday. And then on Friday, we've got uh, the trade balance number, the employment, uh, weekly employment number. That's it. The trade balance number can be a big one. So there's not a lot of huge data. Chicago PMI can be interesting, um, stuff like that. But overall, consumer confidence can be interesting. But if they don't shock the market, there's really nothing here. The uh, trade balance on Friday might be the big one. So Monday holiday, Tuesday, first day back from a three-day weekend, sometimes a little slow to get started. Oh, the other thing to keep in mind, Wednesday is the end of the month. So statements are going to print, and Wednesday probably boring. So maybe we get some shake loose on Thursday. I would look for Thursday to be the better trading day of the week, barring in, unless we get some news somewhere else, right? And then we'll go from there. Charts as usual brought to you by eSignal. If you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to do so. We will help you out for a couple of weeks. Have a great trading week. Have a great Memorial Day weekend from TradeSite.